Hello Foam Fighters, I'm Dr. Flux and in today's video we are taking the Halo MA40 and we're actually going to see if we can fix it and make it perform better. We do this by adding another stage or what I'm going to refer to as an afterburner because of the length. Now if I were to put more in here it could be considered multi-stage but yeah so with this modification we're able to hit numbers of 170 FPS and it is extremely accurate with waffles. So let's go ahead and jump right into this mod and let me show you how I built this. So the Halo MA40 is an icon when it comes to the Halo game and this blaster is super cool. Now, unfortunately, as we all know, with a real steel blaster, long barrels does not translate to higher accuracy and better FPS in Nerf. So when we saw this thing and saw the price tag of around $50, it was kind of unfortunate to see the stock performance. And it has been in a lot of debate as to how we can make this thing perform better. Uh, people like Walcom S7 have actually cut it down and made it kind of a tight bullpup which kind of deviates from the original aesthetics of it, but still is a really cool blaster. I believe he has that video in the works. So the way I was trying to address this was try to keep it in line with how it's intended to look and up its performance. The first thing to do in that regard is to add an afterburner. Now, there's been a lot of kind of speculation as to whether or not there's a dual stage or an afterburner. And I'm gonna go ahead and say because of the performance boost it's getting, and because of this distance is traveling from the back stock pusher to the upper flywheel section, I'm gonna consider this more of a uh, afterburner. As you can see right here, we have a cover that I found on Thingiverse and I'll go ahead and put a link in the description for that. Now the cool thing with this is in the package, it comes with uh, the blaster, it comes with some special darts. So real quick, I uh, just wanna cover the package because this is kind of a special edition type of blaster. It's, I mean, it's uh, a lot of people that are Halo enthusiasts have been waiting for this for quite some time. So I will talk about what's in it. It comes with 10 darts. They are a special dart that is actually, you know, kind of the Master Chief colors over here or just the, the green with the gray tip, which they look pretty sweet for an elite dart. And of course the magazine, which is a special kind of magazine, a uh, special magazine, which mimics the blaster in the game, which is super cool. This uh, up section up here is actually detachable with a little riser, which is kind of cool to have for just nerf accessories. And then of course an ammo counter, which uh, to me, this is kind of a failed opportunity to have a really cool ammo counting system in your blasters. It's just a fake screen. So that's unfortunate. Maybe in the future, I will look at putting an actual ammo counter up there because that would just be awesome. And that's what this, this blaster needs. So let's go ahead and show some unboxing footage and uh, jump right into this mod. I just want to take a moment to kind of go over all the parts that I've been working on over the couple, last couple days. So to make this all happen, I needed a good cage that I could put in line. So I ended up going with a, I believe this is from a Tommy 20. 
And I like this cage because it had these little side mounts that I could actually kind of make mounting brackets for and then put the brass inserts in there so that I can use just regular screws to kind of lock it in place. As you can see here, I have a worker barrel that I actually cut down the stock barrel. I did still need some of the stock barrel because I had to cut a piece for the front that goes in this front section, which we can put that in right now just to show. So that goes in there. And I actually have to like slide this barrel through there. And then once that's set there, it's good to go. And then over here, now this cage has been modified a bit. We had to trim this side off over here for this peg, for this peg here. We also had to trim that peg a little bit. And on here, I actually puttied a brass insert. So we had a mounting point for the cover. So I, I had to basically create a dust cover, which we'll get into that once the final shell's on. So this kind of feeds in there. And then that sits in there. This side is just a regular screw or a M, M hardware type screw. It's like an M3, I believe. Now the cool thing about this is it is uh, somewhat adjustable. And so what I did is I looked down the barrel and depending on how many washers you put right here, you can change the angle. And I found for me personally to get a nice clear shot, it was one washer right there. And I just put another washer on there just to kind of sandwich it. And as you can see, that just holds that in place. Now, these brackets, just in case you're wondering, uh, are made out of erector sets, actually. And I've actually just kind of pieced things together, kind of ground out the shape I needed and actually used rivets to just kind of rivet it in. This piece over here fit really nicely. So I was able to just rivet to the side of the plastic shell, which is really nice. That's, that's ideal. So you want to just rivet to a good support structure. This one was kind of floating. So I just made a big pool of two part epoxy and just kind of let it rest in there. But now it's pretty much solidified and it's, it's sturdy. The barrel I initially attached with CA glue and then I went back and did another bead around the whole thing and just some more epoxy just for that added strength. Cause if this thing disconnects, probably gonna have problems. I thought about doing some more two part putty building this up and then making a little mount to hold it just in case this were to detach. But we'll, we'll run with this to see how it performs. But if this ever has an issue with coming apart, I'm probably gonna go back and add that added support in there. Now for the flywheels, I don't have a lot on hand, so I do have Krakens. I wanna keep the Krakens up front. So these will be going up here. And then in the back, I was gonna just do a MOSFET on this, but I'm probably just gonna throw a couple Valkyries in there and call it good. As of right now, I'm just gonna throw Valkyries back here just for testing to see what kind of performance we get, but we can also change this uh, setup and probably get varied performance. There's also the concept of possibly putting more flywheels in line. Um, I'd probably recommend using the flywheel of the world type setups and they'd have to go this way because there's simply not enough room in the shell. As you can see, I've kind of taken advantage of the thicker parts of the shell for this up here. And even that was really pushing it. As you can see here, I had to do a lot of trimming. So the trimming that I had to do was pretty much, you know, cut these out so that we could, so the motors could come out. And this back battery section, I also had to trim out right here. Bit of trimming, and that's why we ended up making a dust cover which this dust cover is actually a file from Thingiverse, but essentially it's a Strife cover, which I was drawn to it because of the added Picatinny rail attachment, which kind of makes this look not so bad because it kind of looks like it's an added Picatinny rail attachment. And maybe we can kind of overlook the fact that there is a bulging flywheel set up on the side of the blaster and just look and just kind of think of it more as a Picatinny rail upgrade for the blaster, which would make a little bit of sense. I was trying to keep this thing a little bit more in line with how it's intended to look. That's why I kind of went with a little bit darker color scheme. I didn't want to go full black because I'm just not really into painting things full black, but I did give a darker gray up here and some black accents and I'm still going through the blaster. I'm going to be doing detail work on all the switches and whatnot and kind of darken it up a little bit, but I'm just keeping the main front ends 
as a neon orange just for safety. Up here, we did a brass insert to mount this to, and then also I, I built the putty, like I said earlier. So these actually fit perfectly now. Well, before I put that on, let's talk about this cover because I did change it. I had to grind down the front of it and then I actually added some foam just to cover the gap because I didn't like seeing any gap in there. So I just added some foam that just kind of covers that up. And I did have to elongate the holes to fit the M3 hardware. And then these little pieces you see here is actually from an old computer case. I just cut out the grid and painted it silver to give a little accent and just CA glued on the back. But yeah, that pretty much turned out pretty good. I got all my gaps are sealed up on the edges. You can't see the flywheels really, or the flywheel motors, I should say. And I think it is pretty seamless. I'm just trying to keep this as seamless as I can. And a final note, I will be doing the wiring off camera because this is just a strife wire job. There are many videos online on how to wire up a strife, but let me show you real quick because back here, we're just gonna rewire this as a strife and whatever we wire up here, we're just doing up here. So it's just gonna be the same thing. We're just mirroring it because this is basically an afterburner. I wasn't sure if it's gonna be a two stage or an afterburner. I believe because of the distance right here, this is more considered an afterburner. So if you wanted higher, really high performance, you would, to do multi-stage, you would have to kind of step it along. Maybe you could do it with one. I, I'd probably recommend two. So we'll see how this performs though. And so this would be an afterburner, not a dual stage, just because of the gap. I'll go ahead and post a link to a standard strife wiring guide. Now, right off the bat, I just want to address something real quick. The ergonomics of this blaster is probably by far one of my favorite in a flywheeler. Like, I mean, yes, it is kind of ridiculous the travel of the barrel and it is a little bit large, but it just has a very good ergonomics to it. And aesthetically speaking, it actually looks really cool too. This forward section up here for the hand grip is just phenomenal. I, I can't even think of a better feeling forward hand grip and it's just great. And the pistol grip, which is kind of similar of real steel type of ergonomics and you can't really go wrong with that. And also the buttstock is also extremely comfortable. The only gripe I have is that this blocks your line of sight. So when you go to aim, in fact, I just put it backwards. But when you go to aim, you just stare at a fake screen that tells you that you always have 10 rounds. So only gripe there, but you can quickly just pull that off, maybe throw a different optic up here. I think I might end up throwing like a hollow side or some type of a red dot or something up here because I think that would look really cool. It would be even cooler if I could find like maybe an airsoft or some other variant of this that looks like the halo actual optics that I could put up here to kind of complete the aesthetics of the blaster. Now, after going through and doing this modification, we can clearly see this thing got a huge performance boost. Now I got, did some chronograph readings with the 3S and this thing hit up to 173, 74, which is very cool. Considering I only spent a few bucks on the Valkyries and the Krakens are a little bit more spendy and the worker wheels were kind of, they, they were a lower end wheel. I didn't really spend a lot on the wheels. I'll do a full parts list breakdown as to what went in here. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. 
and uh, highly encourage other people to try this type of mod. I am very curious as to how this thing would look with another stage in here. I'll probably flywheel the world or something like that. This is something to consider for this build that the price of this build dr drastically goes up when you start adding multiple stages in here. And I do believe you actually need to probably get a much bigger, more powerful LiPo, maybe even a 4S or something to handle those multiple stages. For me personally, this blaster fits a perfect spot for my local wars, which are around 100, they're 150 FPS cap and shooting this with uh, waffles on 2S is right around 150, which is great. So very happy to see that. And uh, it actually hits pretty accurately when you use men guns or waffle heads. Well, I'm Dr. Flux. I wanna thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments section, did I do the Halo MA40 justice and how I modded it? I'm curious to know if it looks better or worse. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, happy foam flinging. <laughs>